Let us worship God.
Let us make our confession. We have failed, and God loves us. We have forgotten, and God loves us. We have injured, and God loves us. We have polluted, and God loves us. We have aborted, and God loves us. We have turned away, and God loves us. Exist, 
in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here am I and the children whom God has given me. Since therefore the children share flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who, who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that he did not come to help angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people, because he himself was tested by what he suffered. He is able to help those who are being tested.
to in 2023 and of all times and places. You have journeyed with your people from the very first moment of relationship in the garden, through the events of history and alongside the events of this last year and the year to come. Show us each day the beauty of your creation, the strength of your human community, and the potential of our aspirations. We are grateful this day for gifts you have brought to us in this life and on this day. For the joy shared this past week between family and friends as we have gathered and fellowshiped in each other's homes to celebrate the birth of your son. We thank you, Lord, for gloves, scarves, and hats donated by this congregation to keep others in need more. We also thank you for the gifts donated to children we would not have had a present on the tree without the generosity of our members. Continue to stir our spirits so that we are moved to act upon your will. Even during times of alienation and exile, we still long to bring your people back to the promise. We still find ourselves in uncertain times, disorienting circumstances, and long for restoration of your creation and community. In that longing and uncertainty, we lift our prayers of intercession and supplication up to you. We pray for the war in Ukraine and Russia, for families ripped apart and grieving, the losses of loved ones, as well as the trauma of war on their children and future generations. We pray for the women of Iran and the Iranian people seeking greater agency quality and opportunity for them and their children. We pray for those held hostage and without due process as pawns of states and terrorist groups. May people never be used as currency and their humanity, dignity, and agency be preserved and always honored. We pray for those in the LGBTQ plus and gender non-conforming communities whose lives are threatened by violence merely for who they love or for living into authenticity. We also take this moment to pray for those closest to us we may know by name who need your love and care this day. Steve, Lucy, Jeanette, Sandy, Jared, Linda, Brandon, Phyllis, Della, Barbara, Mamie, Richard. And we ask, Lord, for you to be ever present with Reverend Dr. Bob Homer's family that is at his passing. We thank you for the, all that was good and wonderful in him and for his continued service and faithfulness to you throughout out his entire life. We thank you for the dedication and service that you provided this congregation and to its members. Draw close to each one in body, mind, or circumstance, general state. Work within each situation a knowledge of your divine love and compassion that compels your human family toward justice and love. Teach us where we may become hands and feet that all may know your grace and your powerful love. For we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, whom you sent, that we may know fully the depth of your love, and that we may remember the prayer you taught us all. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of forever. Amen. The New Testament reading is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 to 23. Now, after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, 
and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem, who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation. Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled, he will be called a Nazarene.
runes in the Bible, they are normally given to people to foretell the future. If you recall, another Joseph from the Old Testament was given dreams and he was not so popular with his family when he told them that they would be bound to him in the future. Yet our story for this morning comes with mystery of wise men, astrologers, men who studied the stars and planets, traveling from the east, following a very bright star in the sky. We're not told how many wise men. It is only presumed that there were three, because three gifts were presented to the Christ child. These men follow the star and then lose sight of it. So they stop at the king's palace to inquire of the birth of the new king. It seems reasonable that if the king has had a son, then surely the king would know who would wear. If the king had not had a son, sorry, then surely the king would know who and where this other child king is and where he lives. Alas, King Herod does not know any new and great king born within the region. Now, King Herod was not only tyrannical, but he was also exceedingly paranoid. Although Herod had advisors, astrologers, and good counsel, None of them had thought it important to tell Herod of a potential child king born in Bethlehem because it was such a low place to be born from. They did not consider this baby to be a threat to Herod. Yet Herod calls for all the male children, two years and younger, to be slaughtered. Historians figure there were only to be about a thousand people in Bethlehem because it was a small town which would mean that there was possibly only 20 toddlers and infant boys that were killed. Now at the time, this was such an insignificant number of citizens that there was only Matthew's story to tell of Herod's deeds. Historians of biblical time would have been focused on major events that the king of Judea was involved with, such as killing his three sons and a wife his masterful building feats, and politics. The wise men who are in search of the Christ child find him. They pay homage and present their gifts. Then they travel out of town, avoiding Herod's palace, as they knew that he meant harm to the Christ child. In the narrative from this morning's scripture text, Joseph was visited by an angel in a dream. Presumably that very night, for warning him to take the baby and Mary and flee to Egypt. This was to save the child from being killed. Matthew is writing his gospel to a Jewish audience, and he wants them to be reminded of the prophecies foretold from the Old Testament, those of Moses. There are several parallels that Matthew makes with Jesus and Moses. Jesus' flight to Egypt to escape Herod parallels Moses being hidden in the bulrushes to escape Pharaoh, who schemed to murder infant Jewish boys to lessen Jewish power and the danger of the Jewish takeover. It also parallels Moses' flight to Midian to escape prosecution for murder. The murder of baby boys by Herod parallels the number of baby boys by Pharaoh. Both Moses and Jesus escape the murderous plans of their respective rulers. Jesus returned to Israel parallels Moses' elevation to Pharaoh's palace as an infant and his return from exile after the death of the king of Egypt. The phrase for those who are seeking the child's life or dead parallels go back to Egypt for all those who are seeking your life or dead. Richard Donovan states, however, there is a significant twist in the New Testament account. When Pharaoh refused to let the Israelites go, God killed the firstborn sons of the Egyptians. Moses then led the Israelites through the Red Sea, killing the Egyptian soldiers. God led by might. The story in Matthew is quite different. God does not kill Herod or his soldiers. 
Instead, Herod kills the infants, and other men will in a few years kill Jesus. In the Old Testament, God leads by power. In the New Testament, God leads by vulnerability. The events of this lesson show how Jesus happened to grow up in Nazareth rather than Bethlehem. In Galilee, he will grow up rubbing shoulders for Gentiles, which is appropriate to a gospel that begins with Jesus being honored by wise men from the East, requires him to live for a time in Egypt, and concludes with a mission to all nations. Joseph obeys the angel in the dream's warning that his family is in danger. He follows the angel's instructions and flees to Egypt, which is about 150 miles from Bethlehem. This would be several days' journey by foot. Joseph does not wait until daybreak. He wakes Mary and says, we need to leave now. They would not have packed much, if anything, other than the clothes they were wearing and what was needed for the baby. Egypt at the time had a significant Jewish population which would help the Holy Family acclimate to their new home. Egypt was outside of Herod's jurisdiction, and Israelites often took refuge in Egypt when life became difficult elsewhere. The gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh given by the wise men are part of God's provision for the journey. These gifts are valuable and portable. Joseph can take them on a journey and sell them as needed until he gets established. For the longer haul, Joseph can find work as a carpenter in Egypt. We're not told anything other than Joseph obeyed God's word given to him in the dream. He knows nothing except the next step of the journey, but he takes that step. So also is our obedience crucial in God's plan. We cannot see the fullness of God's plan for our lives any better than Joseph could see it set for his life. But we can be assured our faithfulness will lead to great things too. We will not always be aware of them. Sometimes the seed that we plant in one place will blossom, unseen by us in another. In any event, God will not fail to bless our faithfulness. Israel had gone into Egypt many centuries earlier and had come out of Egypt under Moses' leadership. Jesus' journey into Egypt as an infant connects him with a part of Israel's history and also with Moses' role in freeing his people. Moses freed the Israelites from slavery to Egypt. Jesus will free people from slavery to sin. Donovan says Matthew makes the exile a major turning point in Jesus' genealogy. There were 14 generations from Abraham to David, 14 between David and the exile, and 14 more from the exile to the Messiah. The exile brought the Davidic line to an end. Jesus, coming from the house and lineage of David, will reestablish it. After living for a time in Egypt, Joseph receives another dream. In this dream, he is told that those who sought the child's life are now dead. From this dream, Joseph obeys and moves his family to Israel, to the small town of Nazareth. Matthew says this is to fulfill the prophecy. He will be called the Nazarene. However, the Old Testament does not have the word Nazarene. Scholars say Matthew used two words to fulfill what he considered prophecy. He used the words Nazarite and Nesser. A Nazarite is a person set apart as holy and is required not to cut his hair, touch a dead body, or consume wine. Jesus is set apart as holy, but he will touch a dead body and drink wine, so he cannot be a faithful Nazarite. Nasser appears in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1, a Messianic text. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, 
and a branch, which is the word Nesser, shall grow out of his roots. Jesus is clearly the branch to grow out of those roots. Matthew tells us of the mystery, chaos, and evil that were present prior to the birth of the Christ child and after. The Gospel writer provides for his listeners to compare the parallels between Moses and Jesus, along with the exile of the Israelites and the Holy Family's exile to save the child's life. Matthew begins the process for his listeners to understand that the Messiah not only came for the Jews, but also for the Gentiles. Jesus came to save all. This was done through the faithfulness of believers and followers of God, from David all the way to Joseph, and ultimately, Jesus. Unwavering faithfulness in a God who is never silent and never absent. God who continues to speak to us today, as God has done throughout the millennia. Let us be as open to dreams, obedience, and as faithful as Joseph. To God and God the Lord, now and forever. Amen.
by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. At this time, if you would come forward to receive communion.
love of God abide within you this day and all.